So today we're going to talk about the ferrous cell and we're going to try to answer the question, what does the ferrous cell really show? Now this debate all started with this video by YouTuber AB, AB Science. And so AB Science made this video that um, basically caused quite a bit of controversy in amongst a group of people that I am associated with. And so I'm not going to name names, but um, I think some of you may know what went down and the, um, you know, the sort of little mini explosion that happened in amongst a group of people and the infighting that was going on, which is why I made that uh, the last video, the funny video with, uh, you know, with Jack. Uh, Nicholson and all that and so anyways uh, you know a lot of stuff went down and I had to do my own research because people were coming down on me for um, for not um, discounting what this person was saying in the video and so uh, I had to do my own work and so when I asked AB science when I asked him the question how did you do your ferrous cell simulation in that video he told me exactly what he did. Okay, so I did exactly what he said and I got the same results he got and similar results. And so I'm going to explain to you exactly what I did to generate that ferrocell animation that I just uploaded um, yeah, yesterday. So the first step, which actually is probably the hardest step, is to generate a whole bunch of random magnetic moments. Well, what does that mean? Well, given a magnet of known size and dimensions and of known strength, um, what, uh, what you have to do, what uh, the first step was to generate uh, a whole bunch of magnetic moments, uh, choosing random positions around the magnet, generate the magnetic moments of those, um, those particular positions. And what I did was I, I did that and, and stored them into a file. So the first step was to generate a whole bunch of um, magnetic moments in a certain orientation, in a certain location, uh, which I'll explain in a minute, but uh, to generate a bunch of magnetic moments. And these magnetic moments are simulating the nanoparticles in um, between the two pieces of glass or plexiglass or whatever it is you're using. Um, so what, what needs to be done is we need to generate a whole crap load of uh, magnetic moments uh, in a thin layer that would represent the nanoparticles in a thin layer between the two pieces of glass. So how does one go about generating a whole bunch of random magnetic moments? Uh, AB Science, AB Science uh, said he was using Python to generate his magnetic moments and so um, so I went looking to see if I could find a library that could generate the magnetic moments for me. And sure enough, there is a software package called um, MagPyLib, which is uh, magnetic Python library, a free Python package for generating magnetic fields. Okay, so, um, so this is free. And so what I did was I downloaded uh, the latest version of Python, which was Python um, 3.9, and I followed the instructions that they gave in, in this paper. So this brought me to this page here, uh, what is magpylib, and this explains, um, this explains how to, where to download the library and where to put it on your computer and then how to install it into Python. And so after following all this, these steps, it gives you a few um, pieces of example code where you can, um, you can add a cylinder, a, a cylinder magnet to the, um, to the system. Okay, and you can define the dimensions of the cylinder. In this case, it's uh, four millimeters in diameter and five millimeters high. And um, it shows you how to get the magnetic moment out of the system uh, at location four, 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 which is an arbitrary location. 
So um, this seemed simple enough and I, I actually did this and I went through all the steps and I wrote a bit of Python code. So here I am running Python and of course Python is kind of boring because it is just a command line uh, language, at least um, what I'm running is just the command line version of Python because that's really all I needed. And so here is the code that I wrote. We're just going to go over this quickly. Um, first thing I need to do is import random because I want to generate random um, uh, magnetic moments. And then what you do is you import a cylinder magnet with this line of code here. Okay, so the magnet I used, and so I did an actual experiment where I used um, <clears throat> where I used the N52 uh, Gauss magnet with um, that was 25 millimeters tall and 10 millimeters in in diameter. No, 20 millimeters in diameter and 25 millimeters tall. And so here I'm setting my parameters. The height of the magnet is 25 millimeters. The diameter is 20 millimeters, and the N52 uh, uh, Gauss um, magnet is uh, translates to 14, uh, 14,800 Tesla because this toolkit wants the strength in Tesla. Okay, the ferrocell I used was the uh, ferrocell that I actually got from Ken Wheeler, the very first ferrocell I ever had, which still works perfectly. It's the best ferrocell that I've ever had. It's lasted for years and years. It still works the same as the day I got it. And so I'm using that one um, just because it works. And my other um, ferrocells are broken and or in the middle of being rebuilt. And so the height of the ferrocell is, um, it's very thick. It's got two pieces of glass that are five millimeters thick and together it forms a 10 millimeter thick lens but the ferrofluid is in between the two um, uh, the two uh, pieces of glass and so it's five millimeters from the top of the magnet to the ferro lens and so i'm putting in all the parameters as i set up in my experiment okay and i'm making an arbitrary thickness of the uh, how thick the layer is between the two pieces of glass at 0 0.001 millimeters. Okay, so this is, these are the parameters I'm using to generate um, to generate the um, the model, the 3D model of the magnetic moments. Okay, so this is just all I'm doing here is generating the magnetic moments. Okay, so what I do is I set up my cylinder magnet with all the parameters that I just set up here. And then um, I'm going to store all the magnetic moments into a file, which I can find uh, in under C, magnets, magnetic field, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um, actually I'm gonna change that to three because I am generating 300,000 magnetic moments. So in order to simulate the ferrocell, the, the nanoparticles are quite small. And I'm quite sure that there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of nanoparticles in between the two pieces of glass. And so I'm trying to get as many magnetic moments as I can into my model to get as close to reality as possible. And so uh, what I do next is I calculate, I choose random locations, X, Y, Z around the magnet, okay? And then I pass that into a function called get B, which means get the magnetic moment, get the magnetic field. Um, and I'm going to write that all to the file. Okay, so I'm writing the X, Y, Z position and the I, J, K, uh, which is really the um, strength and the orientation of the magnetic moment um, that was calculated by the toolkit. So this is my code, this is all I needed. It fits on a screen, which I really like. And so basically what I can do is I can cut and paste this. I'm going to copy it here and I'm going to paste it into my Python command line. And now it is saving the 300,000 magnetic moments to a file. 
Okay, so this is going to take a while. Um, I'm going to uh, shut down this, um, this recording and then get back to you when this is done.